the whole night prior, uh, my family, my friends, we were all praying that, um, you know, please let them be deaf to our sound and blind to our sight, and please let us escape um, this place. It was a nightmare Heather Dunphy never imagined she'd be living. The mother of three says she and her children were held captive by her estranged husband and his family for seven months in Algeria. She'd gone there to visit his relatives and says she had no warning they would try to prevent them from leaving. I never thought that this would happen to me, and I never thought that he could do something like that. Dunphy says she and the children were mostly confined to a small room, barely big enough to fit them, and were subject to physical, mental, and emotional abuse. But finally, with the help of the Canadian Embassy, Global Affairs, and her friends and family, she carried out a dramatic escape in the early morning hours to a car that was waiting outside for them. I was told that I have five minutes to get the children and get out of the house, five minutes. And I thought, oh my goodness, I don't know if I can do this. I thought, I don't know if I can do this. And uh, then I looked at the kids and they looked at me and I thought, oh, I absolutely have to, I have to do this. Dunphy carried her youngest in her arms and guided the children quietly down the stairs. There was a big metal door, a big iron door, and I pushed it open and it made a big clunk. And I opened that door up and I said, Farah and Saki, run. I said, whatever you do, just yeah. run. It was about maybe just 10 seconds of running. We went down to the street and we were told that the car that would be waiting for us was a white Renault. And when I got there, I seen four white Renaults. <laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness. So they all had their lights off and I thought, oh my goodness, what, which one is it? And um, suddenly across the street, somebody flicked their lights and it was a white Renault. But she wasn't in the clear yet. Her and her children were driven to a safe house until a flight home could be secured. Dunphy's friend, April Marois, had been sounding the alarm to the necessary agencies in Canada since she received a text from Dunphy in March, stating that she was being held against her will. So it was an everyday kind of struggle over the last seven months to kind of get to the fruition of finally seeing their faces at Toronto Pearson Airport, which was fantastic. I realize now that it, it, it took a lot of strength because of everyone telling me that, but uh, at the time I didn't feel very strong because I think any mother would do what I did. I firmly believe that. Now, no charges have been laid against the father. Dunphy says she's currently working to get full custody of the children and will look into what action can be taken against him and his family. Now, I spoke with a representative from the Schleifer Clinic. It's a local agency that assists women experiencing abuse. They say cases like this are more common than one might think. And they recommend that when traveling abroad, whether or not you believe something may happen, it's always best to register on the Government of Canada website, travel.gc.ca, in case of emergency. Thank